Hello, this is Michael Osborne with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution that Jacia came up with for dealing with missing primary keys in PostgreSQL tables. Now, Jacia agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article on his blog at the URL shown here. So let's begin by demonstrating the problem that we're trying to deal with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table in PostgreSQL. Now this table is called the city table. And from the create statement here, you can see that the table contains two columns. The first column is called city. It is of type character varying 80. And the second column is a zip code of type integer. Now notice that neither of these columns has been designated as a primary key. Once the table has been created, I will then insert into the table four rows of data. The first two rows are zip codes for Seattle. The third row is a zip code for Dallas. And the fourth row is a zip code for Albuquerque. I will then do a select from the table to see that those four rows have been inserted. So when I execute these first lines of code, you will see I have created the table. The table has been populated with data. And in fact, those four rows that I inserted are now available in that table. So now that the table has been populated with data, let's try a few more things. I'm first going to attempt to insert data into the table. I'm going to insert a column for Tulsa with a Tulsa zip code. And when I execute those lines of code, it in fact inserts correctly. I will also attempt to update the table and change the zip code from, for Dallas from 75201 to 75202. And in fact, that executes successfully. Finally, I will delete the Tulsa row from the table. Again, all that works fine. So now when I retrieve the data from the table, you will see that I have four rows, Seattle, Albuquerque, and Dallas. Well, two for Seattle one for Albuquerque and one for Dallas. So everything has worked great up to this point. The problem arises when I try to use the PG admin tool to work with this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to PG admin and I'm going to refresh my table list which shows that now I have a city table and now I'm going to right click on city table and I'm going to choose view data view all rows. And when I do, you'll notice it gives me a little warning. It says, I'm sorry, this table does not have a primary key. If you would like to use this tool to edit the table in any way, you must have a primary key. Well, I kind of like using the GUI, and I would prefer to work with it this way rather than writing code in a query. So I really want to build a primary key for this table so that I can edit it. So how would I go about doing that? So the first thing I might try is to simply add a primary key column to my table. For example, I might do something like this. I might alter my table, city table, and add a column, city ID of type integer, primary key. But if I execute that, you will see that I have a problem. The problem is that although I'm creating a primary key column, it is not being populated with any information, and a primary key cannot contain null. Therefore, in order to take this approach, what I will need to do is use a special data type, serial. Now, serial simply auto-populates itself with automatically incremented integer values. Therefore, when I alter the table and add the column city ID of type serial primary key, it will not only create the integer column, it will also populate it with values. And in fact, when I execute this line of code, it successfully creates a primary key column on my table. Now at this point, if I return to my PG Admin tool and refresh my city data, I can then open the data of that table. And you'll notice I did not get that error. And in fact, at this point, I can now edit data. I can choose rows and I can delete them if I want. I have full ability to edit this table however I would like. So this has resolved that problem of the missing primary key. Okay, 
Again, I'd like to thank Jacia for the inspiration for this video. Be sure and check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to PostgreSQL. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.